On the modern battlefield, adaptability is king. And when it comes to modern special operations, few rifles have the adaptability of the FN SCAR. Short for Special Operations Combat Assault Rifle, the SCAR was designed from the ground up to be carried by only the most elite of warfighters. Unlike many successful designs that came before it, the SCAR was not a product of accidental success or rushed adoption by necessity. No, the SCAR was specifically designed with modern operators and modern tactical scenarios in mind. The SCAR's genesis began in 2004 when the United States Special Operations Command, or SOCOM, issued a request for a family of modern assault rifles offered in two calibers, but they must also share as many parts with one another as possible. In addition to this, special operations operators in the field had been requesting a rifle design that had the ability to change barrel lengths or even swap calibers without the need for an armorer. The legendary Belgian-based company, FN Herstel, stepped up to the plate and began design on the SCAR family of rifles. The FN SCAR came in two varieties, the SCAR L, or light, and SCAR H, or heavy. The SCAR L was offered in 5.56 NATO and H in 7.62 NATO. Each rifle had a high amount of parts interchangeability and were designed with user friendliness and ergonomics in mind. By 2007, the design was finished and after some delays, the first SCAR rifles were issued to select units in the 75th Ranger Regiment, with about 600 rifles being deployed. Initial assessments of both variants of the SCAR were good, but by 2010, SOCOM cancelled new orders of the L variant, citing that the rifle did not offer a significant enough advantage over the M4 platform. The SCAR H, on the other hand, was highly effective in combat. Unlike other legacy battle rifles available, such as the M14, the FN SCAR featured a manual of arms and ergonomics that were very similar to the M4. The SCAR H was also significantly lighter than most 7.62 rifles available at the time, while maintaining a soft recoil impulse despite the large cartridge it fires. Over the course of its service history, SOCOM flip-flopped on its stance regarding a 5.56 caliber SCAR. At one point in time, SOCOM ordered caliber conversion kits for the SCAR H to convert it to fire 5.56, but by 2011, SOCOM made the final decision to start acquiring SCAR Ls once more. And now, US Special Operations uses many variants of the SCAR, including both calibers, long barrel designated marksman variants, and CQC short barreled versions. The SCAR's success doesn't end with the US military, however, as over 20 different countries have adopted one or several variants of the SCAR rifle, and it has also become very popular in civilian sales, where semi-automatic versions are offered in nearly every caliber and barrel length as military options. During my time as a firearms dealer, the SCAR was so popular that it was often out of stock for long periods of time, while distributors waited for new arrivals from Belgium. The SCAR family of rifles is not without its detractors, however. Many have criticized the SCAR for being too expensive for little improvement over legacy designs such as the M4 carbine, especially when it comes to the SCAR L variant. But there is a near universal agreement that the SCAR H is an across the board improvement over earlier battle rifle designs. The SCAR family of rifles are gas-operated, rotating bolt assault rifles. The gas operation is achieved via a short-stroke piston design. When a round is fired, expanding gas that propels the bullet down the barrel is tapped via a small gas port on the barrel. This gas then pushes a very small piston, which impacts a long protrusion of the bolt carrier, pushing it to the rear and cycling the action. The SCAR rifles also include a gas regulator, which has two positions, normal and suppressed. In the suppressed setting, Excess gas that is produced while suppressor is equipped is bled off, ensuring that the rate of fire remains constant and reduces wear on the rifle. Easy barrel removal was a key design feature of the FN SCAR, so that operators in the field could change barrels or calibers without the need for unit armorers. Two Torx head screws are located on the left and right hand side of the rifle, and once loosened, the entire barrel and gas system can be removed from the front of the rifle and replaced just as easily. As always, I've poured over the SCAR's in-game model, textures, and animations, and BSG has done an outstanding job representing this rifle in-game. As a SCAR owner myself, I've looked for details that stood out to me, and one such detail is in the trigger of the in-game model. It may be hard to see, but there's a very small G on the trigger, which is the Geisley logo. Geisley produces the Super SCAR Trigger Kit, which is a performance aftermarket trigger. Whenever BSG modeled the SCAR, 
The example they used must have had this trigger installed, as it is not factory. It is also not a part that we can replace in-game, but it's still a cool touch. If I had to critique the in-game scar in any way, I would like to see slightly more color variation between the upper and lower receivers for the Flat Dark Earth version. I've handled dozens, if not hundreds of scars in real life, and the upper receiver on an FDE variant is never the same color as another. The upper receiver can look almost gold on some and a dark bronze on others due to the anodizing process. But of course, this is just a very minor detail. Overall, I am extremely impressed with the in-game representation and glad to have one of my personal favorite firearms in the game. Just like the real life rifles, either SCAR can be outfitted for short, medium, or long range capability. When outfitting your SCAR rifle, take into consideration the type of map you're heading to and make your caliber and barrel length choices accordingly. Going to woods, a long barrel suppressed version of either caliber would suffice. Going to labs, a short or medium barrel 762 option would be best. Headed to dorms, a short and loud 556 variant would be a great choice. Unless more parts are added to the game, you don't need to make a whole lot of changes to the scar. Simply attach a high ergonomics rear grip of your choice, such as the Growl S. And if you're using a medium or long barrel version, replacing the underside and side rails with the MREX rail piece will enhance your stats. Your muzzle device of choice should reduce recoil as much as possible, while maintaining at minimum 30 ergonomics. So consider the Silencer Co. Saker for the 5.56 version, and either the three-piece Lantac Dragon muzzle brake, or the suppressor of your choosing for the SCAR H. Don't be too alarmed if your recoil numbers aren't as low as a Meta M4. The slower fire rate of both guns will help to keep you on target, and the gun shouldn't feel like it jumps around too much. Accuracy is key with both variants of the SCAR, so switch to semi-automatic for slow and precise taps at medium to long range, and automatic hip fire for close quarters. While the debate will rage on for decades as to whether or not the SCAR is a worthy improvement over previous designs, such as the M4, there's no denying that the SCAR rifles in service today have been reliable and effective combat tools by elite warfighters all around the world. With my own experiences with the SCAR, I have to say that the unnaturally soft recoil impulse of this exquisite rifle, combined with its excellent ergonomics and ease of maintenance, will ensure that it remains a part of my collection forever. These features, combined with its reliable service history, makes it no surprise that USEC operators would choose to bring the SCAR rifle into Tarkov. And as we look to the future, new adaptations to the SCAR platform are emerging every few years. So who knows? Perhaps the SCAR will continue to serve with the military elite for decades to come. I hope you all enjoyed this episode of Gun Factor. I admit that I am a little biased towards the SCAR, but I tried to include details on this family of rifles from those who dislike it as well. There's still a bunch of guns to cover in this series, so if you have a suggestion for the next episode, please let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and check out our Discord if you'd like to join our thriving community. I'll have new videos soon, but until then, I'm Jeff with EUL Gaming, good luck out there.